there are probably very few of you who have not yet heard about the phenomenon that is ChatGPT. It has been tested with all kinds of things and has yielded some unbelievable results. But a lot of those tests that I have seen have been primarily in the coding, software development, website development world, where it does produce some terrifyingly incredible results. And while I would bet a substantial amount of money that this video has probably been made a bazillion times before right now, I'm really interested to see what it does when you ask it to write music. Let's start out with something pretty simple. Write a song in the key of, I don't know, what do we wanna play on? A flat, make it major with a bridge that modulates up a minor third. Wow, that's actually really complicated for the first try. Let's see what it does. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. Verse one, A flat, B flat, C minor, A flat. Okay, chorus, verse two, bridge. Ah, that is not a minor third. Chorus, outro. All right, in the key of A flat with a bridge that modulates up a minor third to C sharp minor. That is not correct. I could tell it right now. C sharp minor is not a major third up from A flat. It would be B. <laughs> Let's see what this song sounds like. One, two, at the beginning. Verse two. Chorus. Oh wait, <laughs> it doesn't actually say C sharp minor, it says C sharp. So that would be major, because it doesn't designate it. In its explanation, it said that C-sharp should be minor, but that's not what it says here. So that's not what we're gonna play. So let's play that chorus one more time. Outro is just using the same uh, harmony as the verse. Takeaway from this first thing before we've asked it to make any alterations, it's not the most interesting thing in the world. Uncommon would definitely be correct, because if we look at the verse, I have a feeling of where the home base is here. I want to see if you have the same reaction. So. This whole thing feels like it's built on the four, five, six, four. So the verse is kind of hanging with this air of suspense because we never get the resolution until we hit the chorus. And that's what's kind of interesting to me about this verse to chorus transition here. finally get the resolution to that E flat major on the chorus, and the chorus makes a lot of sense. One, four, minor two, and then we have a plagal cadence here going from four to one. The only thing here is that from the chorus back to the verse, we just kind of stay on this A flat. So what might you consider doing on the chorus to transition back to that verse? We could change our last chord in the chorus to a five chord, that could help, because then we'd have Back to the verse. That's a nice transition, that works perfectly fine. If we were to keep the A flat at the end of the chorus, could we change or throw a chord in there before we hit the A flat of the verse? Just to kind of give us a nice definitive transition between those sections. Hmm, it's, it's, it's quick. You can just kind of go four, five, four, maybe. But let's talk about the most interesting part of what this thing wrote, which was completely wrong according to what I asked it to do. But that's okay because it is kind of interesting. Coming out of the chorus the second time, we go to the bridge. That's a nice transition. But then we go here. Now, on its own, 
I kind of dig that. That's nice. Does it make a lot of sense coming from here? Ooh, you almost want to say that D sharp slash E flat chord might want to be minor? Coming out of the chorus. But it is wrong according to what we asked it to do. So let's ask it to fix its mistake. You incorrectly wrote the bridge in the key of C sharp instead of B, which would be the correct minor third above A flat. You are correct, I apologize for the mistake. The correct chords for the bridge that modulates up a minor third above A flat major would be B, C sharp, D sharp, B. So now it's rewriting the tune, it's using the same chords that we used the first time. Yep, verse and chorus are the same. Are you stuck? It's not possible. No, it's necessary. This doesn't want to continue. It's said to correct its original bridge and replace it with B, C sharp, D sharp, B. Instead of C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, C sharp, it wants us to use B, C sharp, D sharp, B. Let's throw that in after our chorus. Here's our chorus once more. It's kind of interesting, I guess. It winds up just going right back to the home base. I wouldn't say it's it's a particularly well thought out pop song, but you could easily take this and make something out of it. What happens if I tell it, write a jazz chord progression in F major. A common jazz chord progression in F major is the two, five, one progression, which consists of these chords, of the chords D minor, G7, and C major seven. <laughs> Here's an example of an A bar chord progression using these chords, F, F, D minor seven, D minor seven, G7, G7, C major seven, C major seven. This chord progression can be used as a bass for solos, melodies, and improvisation. Additionally, the two, five, one progression is a very common chord progression in jazz music and can be used in many different keys, not just F major. Another possible progression in F major is F, F, A flat seven, A flat seven, D flat seven, D flat seven, G flat major seven, G flat major seven. Whoa, that's interesting. None of this seems correct, but let's take a look at it anyway. So it's telling me that a two, five, one in F major is no, it's not. That's a 251 in the key of C major. Obviously, the correct 251 in F major is G minor 7, C7, F. But let's play this good old chord progression that it's written for us in the key of F with a 251 not in F, but it's in F, trust me. We'll make it jazzy because uh, that's the most obnoxious thing I've ever said. Well, it wants to start on F. We can only assume it wants an F major seven, although it doesn't say that. So technically we probably should just be playing a triad, but whatever. Uh, okay. That's kind of interesting. F, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. I think what it might have wanted to do here and what it was kind of getting at is a one, six, two, five. Because the roots are correct. F, D, G, C. One, six, two, five. That's correct, but its qualities are all over the place. Okay, so the first, the major chord, yep, that's correct. Minor seventh chord, sure. Subdominant, right? Using the G7 instead of its minor, naturally occurring minor chord. Now we're gonna make it a dominant chord. Sure, that works just fine. But C major seven is generally not what you'd expect here because it's the five chord of F. You will expect that to be dominant and it's not. A little bit interesting, but it says another possible progression in F major. Now this is the one that to me, I'm like, what is this gonna do? Because it says F. Huh. This is actually a chord progression that is a commonly used turnaround. You start on the chord that you land on, on the one, and you go up a third and around the circle. 
because it lands you a half step up. I almost said whole. Lands you a half step up above going back to that one. You see that all the time. It sounds like. Now again, the thing that it seems to have mixed up here is the chord quality. It's not that they wouldn't work, like you can make anything work, right? But it's just like, it's, this probably isn't the normally occurring qualities of these chords that you might expect with this particular chord progression. This chord progression is also common in jazz music. It's not really that common. The A flat seven and D flat seven chords are tension chords resolving to the G flat major seven. That's not entirely inaccurate. It's just like a bad way to explain the functionality of what's actually going on here in the key of F. Well, none of that was correct. You are experiencing a car accident. <laughs> I'm not a musician. I may not have knowledge of the correct chord progressions in jazz music. At least you're aware of it. In any case, a professional musician would be able to give you a better insight on the chord progressions used in jazz and guide you on your specific case. Subscribe if you haven't already. Oh my God. And so, musicians out there, don't worry. We are not obsolete just yet. Give it a month or two, maybe. Hey, while well, ChatGPT isn't necessarily gonna help you learn how to play the piano all that well, you know what will is our intro to piano course, which is currently 50% off. For the start of the new year, we wanted to just do a little something to help you get going, learn a new thing, get started learning the piano if you've always wanted to, but you never knew where to start. This is the place for you to start. You don't need a code or anything like that. It's just you click the link in the description down below and the course is 50% off. That deal is going away soon, so be sure to take advantage of it while you can. It's loaded with actual steps and examples, countless exercises. It's still to date the most popular product that we've ever put out. So if you want to get started learning the piano and don't want to rely on something like ChatGPT to do it for you, go use the the link in the description to get 50% off and you could do that for a limited time. You guys, that's the best way that you can support me and the channel and it does a ton to help us continue doing what we love to do here, which is creating this content for you guys. So thank you so much for your support and let me know what you want me to ask uh, ChatGPT next. Let's see how much we can break it. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. Be sure to check out the link in the description down below. Go get 50% off the piano course. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.